Well, I start. I'm uh, Leslie from uh, Belgium. I'm a civil engineer. Uh, I have a record as a technical consultant for architects. I uh, also teach, uh, let's say, technical aspects to architectural uh, students. I know this is, in fact, uh, some kind of uh, a conference about uh, the connection between uh, visuality and math. And what I experienced with my students is that uh, uh, architects are also, in fact, uh, visually based uh, to try to understand uh, space. One of my uh, main uh, interests is, in fact, how you can change that way of thinking to, uh, to an uh, oral way of thinking. And what I would uh, like to present now is my approach to, to, to stimulate a kind of knowledge which uses sound, in fact, to understand space. Yeah. So you see, there is a plane. There is also a connection with the, the perception of noise that you will see. So I call that uh, oral uh, architecture. How do I approach this? So you can talk about uh, acoustic space and oral space. If you make that kind of division, you might or you could say that acoustic space is defined by scientific language, which is more the, the math part of uh, acoustic uh, space. And oral space is the, the experience of uh, space. So it's more uh, psychoacoustic uh, in how we experience sound in space. <coughs> to illustrate that to students, uh, I use examples from uh, music, uh, sound artists. So one is uh, Giovanni Gabrielli, and Giovanni Gabrielli is known for, uh, let's say, the inventor of the polychoral composition uh, in, uh, in sound and music history. In fact. How did he uh, came to that, in fact? Well, he <coughs> I will explain that kind of situation. So he worked in the San Marco church in Venice. And by uh, experiencing the space, in fact, and the, uh, the, uh, the sound quality of the space, he discovered by putting the two cores uh, next to each other and singing to each other, in fact, that it gave some kind of uh, auditive uh, quality. So, there is, or you could say that by um, composing sounds in space, you can have some kind of uh, understanding uh, about the qualities of a certain kind of space. That's the message I want to give to the students. So this presentation, you should see it as some kind of uh, process. Uh, what I would like to introduce in the thinking of students, in fact. So there are other examples. This is um, uh, a lobby from some kind of uh, airport. There are a dry E noise, some kind of uh, a musician or a composer who makes ambient music, especially for airports. There is also La Monteo, which is an, uh, an American sound artist, musician. And he has uh, developed some kind of sound and light environment, which looks a bit like this. You can still visit this uh, installation. It's uh, in, uh, in New York. And it's a, an installation which is continuously uh, playing, in fact. So it's in an apartment somewhere. <coughs> and the key uh, issues he uses in that kind of installation is he uses uh, whole numbers in some kind of uh, uh, overtone spectrum to produce the sound. Uh, the, it's, uh, the sounds are uh, played very long, slow and elongated. And there is also some kind of understanding of spatiality. If you uh, walk in that uh, space, you, according to your uh, position, you will hear different things. So it's yeah, illusion things. He, uh, he also, the, the quality of the sound is he played very loud 
and it is related to the dimensions of the space. So you, he explores standing waves aspects too. Then maybe the, the last uh, sound artist is Pauline Oliveros. Pauline Oliveros is always interesting because she explores the, the act of uh, listening, in fact. So you can hear, but uh, the act of listening to something, so to create some kind of understanding of something, is uh, what she explores, not only by the ears, but as a whole uh, experience. So perhaps you don't know, but even blind or even the deaf people can, can hear by their ears, just by the, the vibration of uh, fluids in their ear, in their eyes. They can hear, in fact. And she is uh, one of the pieces she made is in uh, that kind of space, which is uh, some kind of uh, water tank somewhere in the, in the USA. And the uh, specific quality of this space is that it has a reverberation time of uh, 45 seconds. The rever reverberation time of 45 seconds is it's really extra extraordinary. You can't find it anywhere in the built environment. But let's say if you got some kind of uh, uh, big church, it will be around 10, maybe 12. So this is really an exceptional space. And she made some kind of uh, improvisational uh, sound piece uh, in this space with <coughs> her band. And it's called a ready-made uh, boomerang. Uh, I decided not to uh, let, uh, let you hear things, uh, it's, it's, it's a contrary, but you can always look it up, uh, there are sound examples on YouTube and things. Another uh, artist which is uh, quite uh, interesting to mention to students is, uh, is Madboy. He's a, to a totally different uh, kind of uh, sound artist, he's from the, from the voice uh, scene, he's Japanese, and um, I just skipped this, but I think one quote might be uh, useful <coughs> when you're dealing with art, is that it's some kind of response to, to affect a personal uh, impression. So that's what he says about his sounds too. Uh, these are a personal response to, to, to everyday sounds. He lives, of course, in, uh, in Japan, um, uh, in, in Tokyo, I think, where there is a quite a dense uh, uh, acoustic atmosphere. Nowadays, he works with the uh, sounds of a uh, chicken. But it's not the, the sound of a chicken as a chicken, but as uh, yeah, the, the composition of chickens. It's quite a strange uh, sound. If you uh, go further, then there is uh, nowadays a lot of uh, uh, controversy about uh, noise, noise in the cities. And there is a kind of uh, researcher, Bjorn Hellstrom, he's from uh, Stockholm. And he tried to, to design, in fact, the, the noise perception of uh, certain urban and environments. <coughs> For instance, you could ask how uh, could you decide on this designing such kind of uh, urban configuration, which is an attempt, in fact, to, to uh, uh, defend uh, this area, which is, let's say, uh, a um, highway <coughs> of noise. And after these, uh, these hills, there is a, a park. for leisure. So my question is, what are the parameters you could use to decide on a configuration which you think might lead to uh, a better appreciation, acoustical appreciation, of this kind of uh, area? Other examples I give to students is uh, buildings who are only built for sound. So this is a tower in uh, California, I think. And it's a tower which was developed by uh, an artist, a female artist. It took her, 
I think, 10 years to develop this star. And it is only, the only purpose is in fact to have performers there. And it's uh, a double uh, helix with, with the stair in it and a little perforated holes in it. I just mentioned this. So students know there is some kind of relation between hearing and listening, or an experience, experience in the space. Another example I give, this is uh, an installation somewhere in Belgium, when you, you have a big tube, you can enter it in fact, so you can go in this space, close the door, and then there is a massive uh, ventilator at the end, which starts turning. Yeah? And when you well, when you experience that kind of sound, which is in this tube, it's in, in fact a big flute. As you can see here, there's an opening, so it's a big flute where you can enter. Then you can experience, in fact, what happens to the waves inside that flute. <coughs> which is quite an experience, eh? you can flute, but then you understand there are a lot of theories, kind of a position. A position how waves are going in a kind of tube, but you can experience that kind of uh, thing. <coughs> These are other installations. There are, of course, uh, sound examples with it. Then I try to go further and give them an example. This is a little design I made for a competition uh, in, uh, in London. It, uh, the, the assignment or the competition was about developing some kind of um, exposition area which could be used for uh, little lectures, uh, uh, parties and that kind of thing. So it was related to, to acoustical features which I had liked. And so I started thinking, okay, what can we do? So I took some, I had some inspiration about uh, Bruce Glenormand which is in, uh, an artist I like, uh, it's, uh, this is a visual uh, image and there is some kind of entrance I was quite uh, inspired by which is uh, in India by Le Corbusier which is a, uh, uh, a door which turns and closes the entrance which, but it is not uh, an acoustical uh, closure so that uh, for me was the importance of this Finally, I uh, arrived at this kind of uh, construction. <coughs> what is important to, for me to mention to students that this design is only inspired or is, let's say, an assumption that it might work uh, related to thoughts of acousticians. But it is buildable, huh? what is for me always uh, uh, important. So, to explain a little bit this construction, these are in fact big doors that you can turn. They have different surfaces, so you can in fact change uh, reverberation time inside uh, this, uh, this box and also the diffusion right, of uh, sound waves within this uh, space. Uh, what is also interesting is that it has no fixed structure, so the, the columns itself, it's a, a moving structure. In order, you have columns, they are fixed, but this design, because of uh, reasons, I, we developed some kind of construction where the, the column itself, <coughs> it bears for the roof, but it can turn, which is quite challenging. It is all calculated and <coughs> so these are different possibilities, <coughs> and it's also technically uh, developed, <coughs> and then you gets some kind of detail. Yeah. This was done in collaboration with an acoustician who gave me some information about what kind of material I had to use. But I did not do any calculation. I had, I knew what kind of environment I, um, I had, I wanted to make. And this is, for me, the, the the most challenging thing, uh, things I think nowadays for uh, designers is that you cope with some kind of knowledge which is, which is, uh, which is uh, existing, but you can't uh, absorb all the, the, 
the, the calculating stuff. So you should be able to to get help by people who can. But the key issue is is in the process of uh, of listening. You have to listen to each other and see what kind of aim you need to go to or to, to have. This is an experience I have from my practice because I always work in, in a collaborative team where different advisors and let's say more or less I have to manage all the technical knowledge and translate it to the designing architect, which is in fact the let's say the, the aesthetic part. Right? It's not like that, but uh, just to understand. Then I explain uh, listening, what effect listening could, uh, could be. So you have, of course, listening with your ears. It's like uh, you should expand the way uh, you, you listen to different kind of uh, fields. And you should also understand that <coughs> my ears are not your ears, and my ears are certainly not those ears. And that, that kind of hearing is influencing uh, sound waves to some extent. So it's important that you try to figure out what the other person want to do or needs to do. You can then explain something about uh, figures and facts, so the speed of sound is more than <coughs> for, for, uh, meters a second, depending on some kind of medium. There is some kind of idea of what the sound could mean, how you can describe it by frequency, amplitude, envelope, and whatever. And then I think it's, for me, it's always interesting to uh, mention uh, the, the opposites, like silence and noise, and how it's um, embedded in, the, in art. Eh? You've got... Uh, there was a famous piece by John Cage, uh, which is called Silence. And uh, there he says that, uh, well, at least it was according to an experience John Cage had in uh, an anechoic uh, uh, room. I'll show you some examples of an anechoic room where he uh, uh, sat down for some time and then experienced that there was even in, in a, an enclosed environment that there is a sound. Because at that moment he heard the sounds of his, his body, his uh, blood was flowing and his nerves in fact. So you have a high frequency and a low frequency uh, sound. Uh, noise, there are some kind of uh, interpretation what noise could be. Um, reverberation. So I had, this is let's say the theory of, uh, about uh, reverberation. So it's the time it takes for a sound to decay with uh, 60 decibels, for instance. And if I show this to students, they all always get uh, hands in there, and uh, because then they need to to calculate, in fact. But it's in fact a quite quite simple uh, a simple uh, formula. <coughs> but even that seems quite uh, difficult. Oh, I thought that this. Okay. So this is some kind of example of uh, an anechoic room. In an anechoic room, they test materials to determine the, the certain kind of qualities, uh, absorptive qualities, uh, certain kind of uh, material they have. They use it for helicopters. Uh, you, in fact, an anechoic room, if you enter an anechoic room, it's also some kind of uh, space which is quite unnatural because if you uh, stay there too long, you, you start uh, having uh, illusions uh, and hallucinations, in fact, so it's quite dangerous to go a long time in an in anechoic group. They use it to determine uh, sounds of cars. But the, the concept of the idea of reverberation is also <coughs> used in, uh, in concert halls. This is uh, the, the IRCA in, uh, in Paris, where there is a, a changeable acoustic uh, uh, environment. So you see the wall buildup of this uh, concert hall. You see these uh, little panels. These are, uh, are uh, triangles, not triangles, but turnable pieces. And they have three faces. So, and each face has a different kind of um, uh, a 
absorptive uh, parameter. So you can change, in fact, the, the whole acoustic uh, environment. What uh, students need to do, so when they start a certain kind of assignment with me, is that they first have to uh, look for some kind of sound. So I try to um, start my uh, assignment with a, a listening uh, experience. So they need to choose some kind of uh, sound, whatever they like or don't like. And then they need to figure out how they can interact with that sound. It could be with the space or whatever. I'll show you an example of what I think was a very nice uh, work. <coughs> this was um, work that was done by uh, three or four students. So we had some kind of urban environment. They went to experience the sound atmosphere of that environment. They took uh, recordings, and then they decided to, uh, to develop some kind of um, barrier. So that's, the, in fact, the idea. Hmm? They did not do any uh, calculation or something like that. They, they just went to listen and start and <coughs> treating that kind of uh, acoustic environment. Um, I uh, gave give them uh, some information about uh, traffic noise and how they could uh, filter or what the, I think this specific thing was about a low pass and a high pass filter. And then they started in fact designing uh, this kind of uh, wall, this, this is some kind of section, kind of section about this wall, because they had the idea that they could in some kind of way, I think it's in the next, yeah, that's the concept. So you have a driving car, it makes sound, and then you have little perforations in a wall with a changing, uh, changing rhythm, with a changing uh, space, even with a prototype space, that you could create some kind of uh, beat, uh, a rhythm. You say, okay, that might, might work. <coughs> and then um, we were lucky that we could use uh, uh, an anechoic group so they really made a, a model, which was uh, a realistic model, or at least uh, according to the, the space. Uh, you see here, this is the model, it's not very clear. And here is a microphone, so it was uh, a nice experiment. And at the end, uh, the conclusion, there were some technical problems about the installation itself and the testing, but the main thing was that they uh, tested their uh, model and that there were uh, ideas that this, this concept could work in real life. That was the main conclusion. This is a picture of the model and the kind of pulsing you might get when you try to uh, modify the effect, so that was a big idea, so you have a noisy kind of environment, and by, um, by making a, a space or a kind of uh, architectural invention, in intervention, you could change the idea of noise into something you find pleasing. This, this uh, concept, it was a pulsating uh, pattern. That was a bit of uh, my overview. I don't know if there are questions or remarks. 